Good morning again. Today we hear our gospel, it's all about the Sabbath and keeping the Sabbath and worshiping. So a man was coming out of church one day, and the priest was standing at the door, as he always does, to shake his hand. He grabbed the guy's hand and pulled him aside and said, you need to join the army of the Lord. Well, the man replied, I'm already in the army of the Lord, Pastor. And he says, well, how come I don't see you here except for Christmas and Easter? He says, I'm in the secret service. <laughs> Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. In Jesus' ministry, he was often at odds with the religious authorities on how this commandment was to be observed. But even though he was at odds with the authorities on how it was to be observed, he never discounted the religious value of that day. In our gospel this morning, Jesus attempts to balance sacred scripture with human necessity. One of the things we see in this gospel right away is that sometimes zealous, overly religious people, whether it be the Pharisees of Jesus' day or even people in our own churches today, often tend to get hung up too much on regulations and rituals instead of focusing on what's important, God and human needs. Consider the Jewish people of Jesus' day. The Sabbath was a special day to them. It was ordained by God to be a day of refreshment and rest for his people. In his book, East River, Sholem Ash quits, quotes the words of Moshe Wolf, who says, when people labor not for a livelihood, but just to accumulate wealth, they become slaves. For this reason, God has granted us the Sabbath. For it is by the Sabbath that we're taught we're not working animals just to be born to eat and to labor. But unfortunately, by the time of Jesus, the Sabbath had become a burden and not a blessing. And the reason was because over the years, strict rabbis had added all kinds of strange and petty regulations to the Sabbath. Some were just ridiculous. For example, you could not work on the Sabbath, so you had to be still. You couldn't shave if you were a man. You couldn't ride a horse. If your ox fell in a ditch, you could pull the ox out. If you fell in the ditch, you had to stay there. <laughs> Eggs that were laid on the Sabbath couldn't be eaten because the hens were working. But when Jesus came, he reversed the whole idea, reminding people that people were much more important than any rules, any regulations, rituals, or days. Well, this angered the religious authorities, and they began to plot on how to get rid of him. And beloved of God, we as Christians are often very guilty of doing the same thing that those Pharisees did way back when. At first, the early Christians had no day to worship except the Jewish Sabbath, so they worshiped right along with the Jews on, on that Sabbath day. But as the resurrection of Jesus became an increasing significance to these early Christians, the disciples moved the day to the first day of the week for their Sabbath as a reminder of Easter every Sunday. In the year 321 AD, Constantine made Sunday an official day of rest for the entire empire. And after that is when Christians begin to develop increasing series of strange laws for his observance. For example, in England in 1653, a law was passed with saying that anybody over the age of seven after church who was walking on the streets would be whipped and fined. In our own country, in 1656, a Captain Kemble of Boston came back after a long trip at sea back home to Massachusetts. His wife met him. They kissed. He was arrested because it was illegal to kiss anybody on a Sunday. Most of us here this morning even remember the blue laws that were around when we were growing up. And it is that kind of legalism that Jesus is challenging today in our gospel. He's not challenging the Sabbath itself. Do you see the problem? When legalism, all these strange rituals and rules and regulations start to take over, then the blessing turns into a burden. One Sabbath day, Jesus and his disciples are walking through a wheat field. They're hungry. So they pick some wheat, and they chew on it, and they 
well, some Pharisees saw this, and they were upset. They were irate that they were breaking the Sabbath laws. So they confronted Jesus. But he answered them with this question. Don't you remember when David and his men were fleeing the wrath of King Saul? They came upon the priest who was tending the tent and the Ark of the Covenant, and he asked, they asked for bread to be shared. It was only reserved for priests. In other words, he was trying to tell them, is, look, those priests were working in those tents on the Sabbath. So how's that different? A man comes to him with a paralyzed hand. He invites him to come up. He then asks the religious authority whether it's lawful to heal this man, to do good on the Sabbath. When they refuse to answer, because they don't know how, he heals the man. Well, they interpret this as work. They're convinced that he has willingly and deliberately broken the Sabbath commandment. Beloved of God, I want you to understand that when Jesus healed this man, there's more to just his response in that the rules can be broken. His response was meant to challenge these Pharisees to see what is of greater importance than rules, rituals, and regulations. If people are hungry, they must be fed, whether it's on the Sabbath or not. If people are diseased, they have to be healed, whether it's on the Sabbath or not. If people are oppressed, they must be liberated, Sabbath or not. We need a Sabbath. Jesus is not belittling our need for a Sabbath. He knew that we needed a day of rest, a relaxation, and most important, worship. But the Sabbath is not just one day that we give to God while we keep the other six for ourselves. The Sabbath reminds us to take time to rest, but take time to worship, which we do on Sunday. But you can pray any day of the week and worship. Ralph Sockman once wrote this, six days a week we sit at the loom. On the seventh day, God calls us to come look at the design. With that in mind, I have a question for you. What does Sundays mean to you and to your family? There's a story about a young family who had two little girls. And they made sure that when they came to church, they attended children's worship. And they came to sun church on Sundays as much as they could. And I understand some Sundays, family gets in the way, things get in the way, you're sick, whatever. It's understandable. But the girls were too young to know or read a calendar or know which day of the week it was. So they would ask every day, Mom, is this a school day or a church day? And for them, church days were better. Be and right here in St. Luke and St. Peter, we have a lot of the children that went off to children's worship this morning who look forward to church on Sunday because of children's worship. And I wish that we all felt like they did about a church day. I wish that we all felt that Sunday would be a special day, a time when we soar to the heavens and touch the hand of the Lord of the Sabbath. I have another question. Is Jesus the Lord of the Sabbath for you? Do you wake up every Sunday with a goal of focusing on him and being refreshed and nourished by his presence? Or do you see Sunday as just Saturday with an hour that we go to church? Well, if you're not sure whether Jesus is the Lord of your Sabbath, then the larger issue at hand is, if he's not the Lord of Sunday, not the Lord of your Sabbath, then who is the Lord of the rest of your life? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help me to make every Sabbath about you. Quiet my heart, give rest to my soul, and refocus my spirit. For true renewal comes only from you. Holy Spirit, please help me to be intentional with my time and the time of worship and encourage me to find rest in you alone. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.